You're listening to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Welcome back, folks, as the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. So we're talking about the process of selling a home, start to finish. I'm giving you guys some some gold here, some some nuggets of wisdom uh, in the you know 17 years that I've been selling real estate and the 1,200 plus homes that I've sold and things that I've learned along the way. So we're now at the point where the home has officially listed for sale, right? That's the part of the process we're on. If you're just joining us, I want to talk about showings and it's the, the, the format for showings has really changed uh, over the past several years. It, it depends on how long it's been since you sold your home, but it used to be, and I guess I'm dating myself a little bit here, but it used to be that when you wanted to show a property, you called the listing agent. You said, Hey, I want to see it at this day and time. The listing agent calls the seller. The seller calls the listing agent. The listing agent calls the buyer agent. The buyer agent calls the buyer, blah, 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 big back and forth. Several years ago, they changed that to an online platform to where now agents go online. They select the homes that they want to see. They select the day and the time, and then a third-party company reaches out to the seller to confirm those showings. So it's great from an efficiency perspective because I no longer have to have my phone surgically attached to my face. You know, God forbid I miss a a call and it's a showing request on one of my listings. That all happens online now. But the problem with that is that the person showing the home and the person listing the home are no longer talking to one another before that showing occurs. So you can see it as a problem. I see it as an opportunity. So for the past several years, God, I want to say at least 10 years, uh, we have uh, kind of modified that process and we qualify our showings, at least on the listings where that makes sense, right? If it's a vacant home, then you as a seller aren't inconvenienced by having somebody walk through it. But for the folks that work from home or, uh, you know, maybe one of the spouses works and the other is at home with the kids and a dog and they've got to run around and clean up the home and then leave for an hour for a showing. I'll tell you what, it gets really frustrating as a seller when you go through that process, which is like a two plus hour process. And then you receive the feedback from the agent and they're like, Hey, great house. Um, you know, buyer's not ready to make a move. They're just starting their search. Basically what happened was the buyer agent used your house as an opportunity to try and earn that buyer's business whenever they're actually ready to buy something. Because for a lot of agents, their value proposition is, well, hey, let's just go out and look at some homes. And a lot of folks like doing that. Um, But as a seller, it can be a massive waste of your time and a huge frustration. So uh, it's really important that if if you're going to leave your house, it's for good reason. So, you know, before those showings occur, I mean, we still use the online process, we still make sure that the date and time of the showing works for our sellers. But then we go in behind them, we call those agents and we say, Hey, you know, if uh, just a few questions, I just want to make sure that this showing makes sense and, and provide you some information that you can then relay to your buyers when you're showing the property. But you know, the first question is if they walk through the house and they like what they see, are they in a position to make an offer? And we probably cancel like 20% of our showings because they're not real showings. They're tire kickers. Nothing against tire kickers. Everyone's got to get out there and, you know, kind of see and feel the home that they could potentially afford in that area to make sense out of moving, right? Some people just need to go out and see what they can get for the money to help make sense out of whether it makes sense to sell and move. I get it. But you as a seller should be given the opportunity to not have your time be wasted. So we need to make sure that the people that are viewing your property are ready, willing, and able. And I'll save the other information that we that we get and questions that we ask. Just know that the qualification process for showings is a really important one and something your agent should be doing for you. Now, when those showings start occurring, right, we're going to have feedback. You as a seller always want to know. The agent should always be going in after the showing and talking to those agents and finding out what they liked and didn't like and so on and so forth. But you need to determine what these check-ins with your agents are going to look like. What kind of information are they going to provide you with and how often do they provide it? So you have a record of the actions they're taking to proactively sell your home. And, you know, again, with the feedback, here's the reality. Most agents don't provide it willingly. Like if a home is shown 
and the showing time is 4 to 5 p.m. At 5.01, the system that that same agent used to schedule the showing automatically sends a feedback request form to that agent. (laughs) Probably 25% of agents actually fill it out. We have to go back in and basically chase down those agents and find out what the feedback was, you know, and, and then we have to determine what kind of feedback are we actually getting? Is it the agent's feedback? Is it the buyer's feedback? Is it both? Is it valuable feedback you can actually do something with? Or was their decision not to make an offer out of your control? Things like floor plan or neighborhood or so on and so forth. But if they say something you can control or you can do something about, then obviously your agent, you and your agent need to talk about this, but they should be asking things like, well, hey, if we were a able to address some or all of those concerns, would your buyer consider making an offer? And this is where the art of sales comes in. And frankly, I think the art of sales for most people, especially, well, that might not be fair to say, but I I will say this. I think the art of sales is, is being lost. I don't, you know, you, you guys can contest me on that, but as somebody that's been in this business, um, most agents, aren't as effective at sales as I think they used to be. And I could go down a whole rabbit hole on that comment, but I'm not going to. But the the important thing is that if the info they provide should be used to assist you in determining whether you're on the right track with your asking price, with how the property is presented, or if changes should be made. And if the buyer says something like, well, you know, we love the house, we just hate the paint color. Well, I mean, how much would it cost to paint the house? Is that something that the seller might be willing to contribute to? Or we get all these feedback requests or or, or feedback forms, responses that say, hey, love the house, silver priced. Now, that's a dangerous one uh, because a lot of agents out there, uh, without you knowing, are having conversations with agents that say, hey, if you just bring me, you know, X, then I'm pretty sure I can get that deal done. You know, it's listed for a million bucks. Hey, if you bring me 950, I can get that deal done. That should never come out of your agent's mouth, obviously, for for obvious reasons, but it happens. Um, and there are some agents that are pretty well known for that in, in this market. And of course, or across the country, um, you want to make sure you're doing your due diligence. And that's when interviewing those agents really comes into play. You want to see how they handle themselves. Um, but if they say something like, hey, the price is too high, you have to be careful because that agent might be saying that just to try and get the listing agent to say, oh, well, they're, they're really negotiable and blah, 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 blah. Well, how negotiable do you think they are? Or the other classic one that buyer agents use is, hey, I don't, I don't want to waste anybody's time with putting together this offer if your seller isn't interested in it is because it's just it takes a lot of time to put the paperwork together, blah, blah, blah. It really doesn't. But that's the excuse they use. Hey, would your seller be open to taking X? Right. We, we never answer those questions. Make an offer and let's find out. Let's let the buyer and seller negotiate. But you've got to be really careful that uh, the agent that you're working with isn't basically giving your money away. Um, and the last thing that I'll just say really quickly is how to handle lowball offers. You know, I, I think in the past two years, we haven't seen very many of them. I think they're going to become more of a thing. Uh, we're already starting to see it a little bit based on, you know, the buyers having a little bit more. Uh, power in the process because they understand the trends within the market, or at least what you hope they do. Um, so I don't, I don't personally care like where a buyer starts. I just care where they finish. I, I don't care if a buyer makes a $700,000 offer on a million dollar listing. We're going to counter it. We've got a very specific way of working those types of deals. And more often than not, we actually get a deal done and it's way above that initial price that they offered. Some people just need to kind of get it out of their system. You know, they just need to feel like they checked that box. Hey, I know they're not going to accept this, but there's no harm in trying. It's the same school of thought as, hey, I know I'm not going to be able to sell my home for this much money, but you might as well try. It's easier to come down than it is to go up, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can spin some wheels if if that's your train of thought. Uh, and you can, frankly, if you're, if you're a buyer, there is the risk of just ticking off the seller and them becoming emotionally involved in the process and them just deciding not to sell it to you because they think you're a jerk or whatever it is who knows but um we're going to take one more break when we come back we're going to talk about what happens once you're under contract we'll make that short and sweet but if you have any questions about selling your house you're thinking of selling your home feel free to give me a call we'd love to earn your business my number is 
843-800-0065. That's 843-800-0065. Or go to listingsincharleston.com. Stick around. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. 